stories of TVT not being a great matchup. Well, they were true in January, but we got a patch in February. We have a new way to play, courtesy of IEM Katowice. And Bion and Maru, they played one of the absolute best series of that entire tournament in the group stage. I, I can't wait. Hopefully they do it again here. Game one. And by the way, we talk about them playing some of the best possible games, playing some of the best games of IEM Katowice on, uh, on this map. Well, or sorry, best games of Katowice. Well, they did it on this map. They did it on Gresfon. It was a 30 minute slugfest, 25 minute slugfest back and forth. And the big question that I'm, I'm paying attention to right now as I watch the series is has Maru caught up stylistically? Has Maru caught up to the way the modern TVT meta is, is getting played? Because, well, Maru was doing the Mass Raven late game thing in Katowice, and it was kind of working for him, but you could see the cracks, and no one else was doing it because realistically, this was something where you would expect is, okay, well, you know, um, this is something that, uh, totally lost my train of thought. Uh, I was reading the, the, the stats that I pulled up, but, um, Realistically, Ravens are not as good as they were anymore. Auto turrets certainly struggle against Marines. Uh, they just 30 less HP, one less armor, and they last three less seconds. They're just, they don't last in the late game anymore. So it makes sense now that, okay, well, especially with the fact that now Liberators have been buffed as well. They're cheaper. Uh, this Liberator Viking late game is just really, really powerful. And those, of course, if you're looking at the uh, the stats that pulled up for a second, you say, well, okay, what's that form stat? I understand that Maru is 21 and 6 in series versus Beyond in Legacy of the Void. By the way, they, they play a lot. And it's, it's so fun when I talk about this series because you look at it, you're like, wow. This is going to be a really great series. And it's going to be a 2-0 Maru victory. Like, it's going to be super close back and forth and Maru 2 0 is at the end. Uh, but, okay, the head-to-head -head makes sense. What does form mean? That is how the players have been playing in this matchup in the last 28 days or so. Across all TVTs, uh, actually, I don't remember what the percentages were, but uh, let's say Maru is 75% win rate in TVT in the last 30 days. Um, that's what form means. But now, Reapers and Hellions coming in from Bion and Maru. Bion, he's got the extra Hellion here, but the Widow Mine means that Maru is going to be safe because that extra, what do you sacrifice? You sac sacrifice a Hellion, you sacrifice a Reaper, I, I, you lose any of those and. Well, then you no longer have any force superiority and you're really not going to find much value. So instead, Bion's going to back up for a second, but he does have more Reapers on the way. And this is going to be interesting. But the Widowmine pulled back a little bit. It gets repaired here. So there's going to be no play where the Hellion Splasher. You know what? Actually, Bion has five Reapers. How many... I forget how much damage KDA charges do, but anyway, Bion tries to jump in right now. Cyclone gets a good lock on, though, and this is not really going to work out for Bion. He tries. He he tests the waters, but Reaper and Hellion for just a Reaper, and th this army is just not something anymore that, that Bion can contest with this paltry aggressive force. So we're going to see him pull it back, and that's not going to say that he's not going to find value with this army. Certainly not. Oh, hey, you know, there we go. Reaper falls. Uh, but more importantly... He's not going to find value right now. So we're going to see the Reapers pull back. They're probably going to try to dive into the main base in a minute or, minute or two, maybe. Because he still has, you know, four Reapers. That two shots SCVs. You can find value there. Although, as I say that, Maru is trying to box this in. He's got army on the low ground. Well, actually, it's all pulled back into the main base here. No wood of mine either. So Bjorn, well, he's going to try to dive right on in. The Cyclone drops gone. So a couple of SCVs will fall. One, two, three, four. And Bion finds the value knocking at the door that he was looking for earlier. And now into the main base. There is no defense here. You drop an auto turret. Well, that's less energy. Aggressive across the map. Five workers will go down. Make it a couple more here. KD charges as well. Denying mining. And Bion did not find the value from this pressure early on. But he gets eight SCVs. And forces all the energy out of the Raven. Massive moves. Coming out of the Red Terran player here in this game number one. And now he's up six workers. Army supplies are equal. Army tech is kind of right there. Big difference, of course, is uh, 
beyond extra medevac lacking in tank lacking in raven but everything else i mean it's kind of fine and as i don't know that maru's gonna run across the map super quickly with anything more than like a hellion scouting the lack of siege tanks is not going to be that big of a deal right now although you know beyond will lose this scv this building the command center just briefly but now double drops getting ready beyond into the main base here and he's got first move his advantage he's got stim done already Maru's not even close, so we're going to see auto turrets get spammed out. But that's not really going to do much of anything. Gun moves away for just a moment. Three SCVs have fallen, but the mining time is the true problem here. And all the gas, other things, but Gun Is he aware of the drop that's going to try to find its way in on the other side? For now, he's just microing individual Marines against the Cyclone, and that's something. Now, he can't move in too much further forward because, hey... There's a tank finding its way in, and Bion will be forced back. But Maru, well, how much is he going to get dropped here? Nothing. The drop gets knocked down. Five SCVs fall. And Bion now insanely ahead. Yeah, there's a Widow Mine. It gets a single Marine. Who cares? 11 SCVs go down to six, but more importantly, Maru was not mining out of his main base for quite a while. He finds himself up literally double the army supply at this point due to everything that's happened. And let's see if he can break Mario, though. That's the big question. Supply is a compelling argument that we use to tell the story of games. You know, Todd is famous for it. Now, look at you, Supply, right? But TVT is that one matchup where Supply really doesn't tell the story. Uh, there are times when, like, yeah, ZVT, maybe not. Zerg's going to be down in Supply because their their units are, are pretty Supply efficient on creep if you go Ling Bane. But in general, Supply tells a pretty good story. TVT, though, you got tanks. And they make up for a whole hell of a lot. So, Beyond is sharking around. He was looking for an opportunity. He will not find it as the Cyclone runs in. Beyond <laughs> does not go for it. Does not kill the Cyclone. And these three Ravens, they're going to have to do a lot for Maru here. And they have a good chance to right we are looking at three tanks for beyond right now maru has four but there are more than enough uh, shutdowns to make sure these tanks never fire a shot so beyond he's got a nice position on the map right now this sieged up position on the right side we're gonna see another gas geyser go down hey that's something but beyond making a full-on like a straight up push i don't know how well that's gonna work but he gets the unsieged on the tank so raven energy one expended and that does make this push a little bit easier to stomach, a little bit easier to make possible. But of course, Beyond, he's looking for more opportunities. But there are so many. This is Fortress Terran in the main. Make no mistake about it. Four missile turrets in the main base of what is effectively a two-base Terran is massive. That is, it's almost the cost of, of another command center here. That's easy to afford on three to four bases. On two bases? Yeah, you know, no, absolutely not. This is expensive for Maru to try to make happen. But he has been able to sneak out a couple medevacs on the other side. Meanwhile, of course, Bion, four bases on the way. He's going to double up the economy of Maru here pretty quickly. So it's going to be interesting to see whether Maru can do anything with this. And, you know, well, for now, Maru, uh, Bion does not have the unseize right here. Well, he does have on the second one. So it's one tank will fall and Bion forced back just a little bit. But we have army. Finding his way onto the other side of the map is, uh, well, for now, seems like this fourth base will fall. Really not going to be all that much that can save it. So what does Bion do, though? He's got big army on the left, big army on the right. Seems like he's just going to situate himself up for a massive surround coming in from every angle. And that, that appears to be the case. We see him moving around, posturing. He scans out the army. And there are just, it's through three tanks. This is not a lot of stuff. So beyond posturing, getting ready. Is he going to be able to make this happen? Notice he's just sitting right on the very edge of sensor tower range. The returning drop's going to find some of this. Sure, but Maru doesn't know where this army is. But instead, beyond not going for this round at all, he finds that drop position in the main base. And for the third time, we're going to see a refinery fall down. But this time... Maru is going to have to commit a decent amount more to defend. So the missile turret will fall. The refinery goes down. SCVs continue to die. And this is just an opening and an opportunity for Bion to find his way into this base. And the damage, by the way, 
Looks like that was dealt with, but now Bion stims on it into the third. Anti-armor missile be damned. He's going to start to knock these tanks right down. Marines are slow on the uptake, and yeah, Bion has to get forced back for the moment, but eh, he's finding damage in the main base here. So, drop in the main. And Bion just takes this opportunity to go elsewhere, to stim into the natural once again. The tanks, they are going to seize their way right on up. And what can Maru do? He's running out of damage everywhere. And yeah, the drop in the main was dealt with. For the most part, there are six Marines in the medevac. And you know, in credit tomorrow, as much as I'm saying, wow, what can he do? Well, his upgrades are going to complete soon enough. What? Oh, that was the right upgrade. Never mind. Yeah, Mario's upgrades are, are pretty far behind here. But he's going to try to move forward anyways. Bio stims forward. It's not a lot of Marines. So these tanks will get knocked down. And Bion? He's forced back. The drop in the main base is going to try to find... Something more. Did, did Bion get an eBay? No, Maru, I guess. Is Maru on single eBay? No, Maru's not, but the tanks will go down. Uh, this, well, finally, the drop gets dealt with as well. Maru has just forgotten his armor upgrade. <laughs> it feels awkward to say it because this is the game that Bion is playing, but he pulled a Bion. He forgot his armor upgrade, or it, it, I guess on a better way to say it in this game. He didn't have the gas for his upgrade. He, uh, the economy of Maru is seriously hurting right now as a triple drop into the main base once again. This time there's a tank. But beyond, well, he's not going to let the drop in the now. He's going to, looks like he's going to unload mostly in the main base. Boosting forward so he can make sure he can get that tank out. The Marines going forward. Armory is going to try to get built again because, well, beyond, Maru can't build his armor upgrade. He doesn't have an armory at the moment. And now up on the high ground, here come the Marines. Maru is dead. And I said this was going to be a hard fought back and forth to zero. Well, Bion putting the light of that truth as game one goes the way of Bion. So now, game number two of this winner's match. Winner's, I can say winner's bracket finals. This winner's match here in GSL Group A. Bion, he's up a game in this series and he played dramatically well but Maru he's the king of TVT for a reason let's see if the tide shifts game two certainly it's a smaller map let's see let's figure out what exactly is going to happen in this game it is one thing to take a game it's another thing to take a series and Mar there is no one better at Mar no one better in TVT than my okay that's not fair uh no one, t no one better in coming back into TVTs than Maru, except maybe TY. But TY didn't qualify for the GSL this season, unfortunately. And he's actually trying to do both. Uh, when he's come back, first of all, I don't think he re-signed with the Afrika Freaks. Uh, stats, uh, Afrika, or sorry, the Kwangdong Freaks now. Um, stats, or the, the Freaks put out a statement saying, yes, yeah, Stats stats has re-signed with us as he's, as he's come back from military. But TY didn't. So I think he's unsigned at the moment. But he he talked about how he wanted to go pro in Brood War and StarCraft 2. How he wanted to do both. And I mean, I think the only time that that has been successful was during the uh, the, the the split pro league era. <laughs> and that wasn't even really successful. It was just a lot of the successful Brood War pros were doing it because they kind of had to. They didn't have a choice. So by definition, because they were winning things in StarCraft 2, because, you know, they were pro gamers and a lot of the other pro players were not, uh, I, that's the closest we can get, I guess. But hey, if TY, if TY next year or like late this year, and I know it's not going to happen, but if TY wanted ASL and GSL in the same, in the same season, oh, that'd be so cool. I desperately want that storyline. But it's not going to happen. I don't know. I would have told you that someone casting the GSL is probably also not going to win the GSL, but then TY did that. So you never know. For now, though, mirrored builds coming out of both players here. Barracks, Double Gas, Factory, Command Center. You know the drill. Starport on the way. Beyond the one though that is telegraphing his defensive intentions game one it was Mario that said yeah you know I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a widow mine 
That means that if you want to go get aggressive, you will lose a unit, and then I will have a defender's advantage. I will have unit superiority. You're not breaking in. This time, though. Beyond that, doing that, doing that, as he hides the widow mine behind the uh, behind the scanning tower, whatever it is that uh, that's on the the orbital. Does Beyond think this is PVT? <laughs> that's not a position that you normally use to hide a, a widow mine in in this matchup in particular. There we go. Drop onto the other side of the map. Hellion running along saying, hey, don't, don't wait. Don't, don't forget about me. Wait for me. Wait for me. Actually, no, wait. Is the Hellion? Yeah, okay. There we go. Running across the map. And it does feel like Bion does have to get damage here because this is a very quick third base. Uh, coming out of Mario at this point. So now drop into the main. Widowmine gets a decent burrow off. SDVs all get pulled. And the Widowmine goes down due to the Raven before any damage can happen. So drop part one finds nothing. Although, uh, I, in fairness, this is less disastrous than what happened when we saw Mario, by the way. The, the, the most recent turn... Um, the most recent games that I've seen a, a player do this. It was Maru versus Oliveira in the Katowice Grand Finals. And this time, it, the, the Widowmine got no damage. Okay, zero damage is fine, but it is not great. But in that Oliveira series, it did negative damage. It actually friendly fired and killed off the entire drop effectively. It, close enough. And Maru, instead of just losing a Widowmine and, and not killing SCVs, he lost his entire drop. He lost all of his map control. And it was horrible. One of the many things that had me looking at that series and say, well, okay, so... Oliveira is clearly Taverine. He clearly is, you know, is shaping the skeins of fate around him. Because there is no reason that this should be working as it is. So now that Beyond really gets no value... Mario's got 1-1 one, one on the way. He's got his command center, his orbital, excuse me, done, adding in additional barracks. And because Bjorn committed to such an aggressive opener and got literally nothing, I mean, I guess he killed a Reaper in a heli, and at some point, I don't quite know when that was, I this is, this is not great for him. <laughs> he is going to have to find some opportunity, and this is a lot of pressure on the map. Three medevacs, a raven that's going to try to find its way into the main. And there's still this, this stuff... The, the Cyclone, the Met, the Viking, or the, the Reapers, the Hellion, and then outside of Maru's Natural. This is a lot of pressure. And Maru should be aware of this. He's got this Raven. Actually, I guess that's not on patrol. He just kind of zooped it out for the moment. He scans the Natural and sees, okay, that's a lot of Marines. That's, that's some tanks. Maybe I can find some value here. So we're going to see that drop move in. Cyclone gets a lock on onto a single Marine, but this army is forced back. And Bjorn doesn't test it. He moves forward just a little bit more. And the Raven, well, Ravens and uh, Ravens and Medivac see each other. But now the boost into the main base here. Missile turret is going to force Bjorn back. That's, oh, this lock on, though, is going to be very nice. Medivac will fall down and I mean there's still medevacs here but it is just a little bit less healing a little bit less map movement and now the cyclones they're gonna get caught out a little bit but I am really scared about this push coming in from Maru he's sitting here it's one raven to one sure but he's got one one done combat shields done all right just about there we go Beyond has none of that. So here comes Maru, but Beyond seems to have the first siege in, but okay, two tanks get disabled. Three tanks still here, but the tanks, they're zoning things out, and Maru, he doesn't need to kill the army. He's just gonna go kill the natural. So many SCVs are gonna hit the deck here, and Maru, Beyond has to pick up, drop into the natural, but 28 dead SCVs. That's massive damage. Maru is seizing opportunity here. It's just... It's gonna be a tough road to hoe, but now... Marines are going to try to find their way in because there's only two tanks seized up right now outside of the third. Marines, are, they're going to try to stem in here, but only one tank's going to get disabled. Auto turret does absolutely nothing. 
And the Marines, as they continue to rally in, they're going to get another tank. Oh, more Marines and Maru drop on top. And Byun, just in one fell sloop, gets absolutely eviscerated in this game number two. And uh, we get to go to game number three. Winner moves on. Loser moves to the elimination match. So now we find our way into game number three here. Byun played an excellent game number one. It looked good. He looked crisp. He found the damage he wanted. He found damage that probably should not have been there. But game two, that same damage he found, not there. Maru defends perfectly. He's got all the timings. And that puts him up, or that ties him up in the series. What are we going to find here in this game number three? Well, it's pretty simple. There's a proxy on the map. Proxy 2 Rax Reaper. And beyond. Good news if you're a Beyond fan, this is Barracks double gas into a factory, most likely. He has opportunities. He has this ability to build Reapers, to build Hellions, and defend this. But really, it's a it's a question of several things. Does Maru move out with that first Reaper and try to get damage done? Does he wait until he has three? Does Beyond go does Beyond go quick? Huh. Does Beyond go quick tech lab on the factory? Does he just build those hellions first of all a couple different questions that we need to answer but for now the reapers they're on the way second barracks just about done maru adds in the orbital as well and by the way this barracks positioning it's nice for beyond because it means that it's more likely that he's going to catch these reapers and also well yeah i mean yeah that is kind of the biggest thing there beyond the scout or maru scouts out that this yes this is barracks double gas factory it's not the, the ideal here would be Reaper Expand. <laughs> that would almost just be a dead Mar or a dead Beyond. But this one does give Beyond a fighting chance as he's going to move out on the map, though. And this is where pooling those Reapers can be so impactful. He's Beyond has to scout on the other side. He didn't SCV scout here in this game. He has no idea what's happening. So the Reaper's going to go see no natural, but that's not that weird. He's going to have to go into the main base to check and... Well, he's going to find two Reapers. He's going to find an SCV in his main base. And immediately, Panic Bion runs across the map at SCVs. They're already starting to fall. And the Reaper control, well, Bion is the best in the world. Probably had a Reaper control. But Maru, he is up there. So now gets on top of the Reaper. One shot, two shot. It's going to go down. And now Maru camps out where the factory is. SCVs have to get pulled even more. Another Reaper is going to arrive back home. KD8 charge. It's going to force things back. And more and more SCVs continue to hit the deck. Maru not losing a single Reaper here. And now, can he dive on top of the Hellion? One Reaper will fall, but we're still three on one, three on none. Hellion's gonna go down, and Byun taps out in Korean and English. Maru advances first place, Group A.